So we're going to start. Um, this is uh, building your UI using jQuery and the ArcGIS API for JavaScript. My name is uh, Juan Carlos Franco. I work with the JavaScript API team, uh, mostly uh, with widgets. And uh, Alan is a lead, um, a senior UI designer. And um, uh, we are going to talk about um, two apps that we developed and kind of focus on integration when uh, involving uh, jQuery, jQuery UI, and Bootstrap. So we're going to go straight into code. Uh, but before that, uh, Alan's going to demonstrate the, one of the apps uh, that we developed. All right. Can, I feel like it's in the wrong place. So um, we, uh, we basically grabbed a Bootstrap, the Bootstrap framework pretty much out of the box, and then applied uh, just some, a free Bootstrap theme that you could download. It's, like, it's called Grayscale. Uh, didn't really do any real tweaks to it. Um, just kind of used it as it is. Uh, and then we, uh, Bootstrap obviously has a dependency on jQuery, but then we also use jQuery uh, to query out to Strava's API. If you don't know what Strava is, it's a way of tracking like uh, running rides, like bicycle rides and stuff like that. So we reached out to the uh, Strava API and then are getting back data from a ride that I did a little while ago, uh, and then pulled that data. Are you running the, huh? are you running the server? I, I think I shut off the server. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I shut off my server. Do you want to switch to yours? Yeah. Sure mine? yeah. So, sorry, I shut off my server, so we weren't seeing the data, but this one should show the data. Should show the data. Should. Oh, it's... Uh... Is yours not running too? All right. All right, sorry about that. We had a local server that we had to get spun up. So that's pulling data from the API, and then it's pulling those images uh, using uh, just stuff straight out of that API, and that's all jQuery. Uh, and so you can see that those images are getting pulled in from that ride. That polyline that's being pulled on, to, put onto the map, is coming straight out of Strava. And then we're using the JavaScript API to to, to unpack that polyline and put it on the map. Uh, and the only thing we really had to do uh, in terms of like a tweak. Uh, Bootstrap has a style just on a footer element uh, with no class selector. It's just straight on the footer. So it was doing a little weird thing to the pop-up because uh, in the pop-up we're using as much native HTML and semantic HTML as possible. So there was a little tweak there. So we wrote like one style for the pop-up footer, which was like padding zero. And that's pretty much all we had to do to make everything work. So with that, I'm going to pass it back over to JC, and he's going to talk, talk you through like more of the technical aspects of what we did. Cool. So um, as Alan showed, this uh, application uh, focuses mostly on, uh, the focus of this application is having an existing bootstrap jQuery application and then seeing how we can bring the JavaScript API into it. Um, and so the way it's structured, um, I mean, as you can see here, we are just bringing our CSS from the API bootstrap a theme as well, and um, uh, we have a custom set of styles that Alan said that we needed because um, Bootstrap tends to override some native elements, and we may not, I mean, not everyone uh, wants uh, their styles overridden by default, so. Um, oh, sorry. Can you hear me better? Yeah. Cool. All right. So as I said before, uh, on the top, we're just importing some CSS for Bootstrap and the JavaScript API, and uh, a few of our overrides, which uh, Alan talked about, the padding. And here we're just structuring the page as um, following uh, Bootstrap conventions. And then uh, near the end, this is where it gets interesting, because um, we had to kind of deviate a little bit uh, from the common jQuery way of bringing in uh, the jQuery script, because um, so the JavaScript API um, runs on a, is AMD, right? So AMD is a spec that um, 
is useful because it, it uh, eliminates the the um, the issues about JavaScript um, dependencies. So it uh, helps us. Uh, it takes away all the concerns of um, dependency loading and for us, and then that way we get guaranteed that when our app runs, all of our resources are, are loaded. So the way we did that is, since we're already referencing the JavaScript API, um, we already have access to an AMD loader. So luckily, jQuery supports AMD. So um, we have to define a package and let the loader know uh, where to find all of our dependencies. And for this application, we uh, use Bower to install all of our dependencies locally because we didn't want to rely on the CDN, but you could if you wanted to. Uh, the, one of the benefits here is that if you wanted to um, minimize, minify your, your CSS, you could do it. Um, versus if you use a CDN, it's not, not that easy. And I use the depth property here to make sure that jQuery is loaded as soon as the loader is available. And that's because um, jQuery um, Bootstrap is not necessarily AMD, so we need to make sure that jQuery is loaded as, as soon as possible. And then we just extract everything into our uh, application module, and I'll go into that right now. So we are requiring all of our AMD uh, modules here, jQuery being one of them, and then everything else um, uh, should be uh, from the JavaScript API. That bottom one is a utility that uh, we, we use for a, a nice effect on the page. So uh, this code is structured to try to leverage jQuery as much as possible. So uh, what we do here is um, uh, following jQuery conventions, we want to initialize our app as soon as jQuery is loaded. And we do that by passing our uh, startup function to uh, the jQuery object. And then afterwards, it's pretty much, it's pretty straightforward. We are uh, loading our app, our uh, map. We are creating our map, setting up our view, uh, configuring our pop-up to load on the side. And then afterwards, we are also uh, fetching some local data to uh, be able to display the ride and the pictures on the map. And we, um, since we want to keep using the jQuery way of doing it, uh, we're using the Ajax uh, function and uh, because I want to, um, within one single promise chain, within one single request, using promises, I am gonna, I'm going to get um, the activities, the specific activity, which is that ride that you saw on the map. And then after these are loaded, I'm chaining another promise to retrieve the photos. And then whenever those two are ready, I'm just wrapping an object with those two uh, uh, data objects. And afterwards, I'll, I'll just process the data and place it on my map. So I'm using a utility that I got from uh, this web page because the data from Strava encodes their uh, polylines for, the, for, in, for a ride in this case. So um, I had to, we didn't have access to the, um, to the uh, coordinates um, unless we had to decode this, this uh, polyline. So that's just, uh, a little utility that I used. And then we flip the lat longs to be long lats, because that's what the API expects. Uh, and I'm creating a polyline with those paths. And simply just creating a graphic specifying the geometry we just created for the ride, um, assigning a, 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 a simple line symbol, or configuring it, adding it to the graphics layer. And once that's ready, I will zoom in to the, uh, the, the polyline's extent. And this is uh, leveraging all the JavaScript ap um, APIs that are available to you. And now for the individual pictures, I'm doing something similar. I'm processing each of the pictures and then just creating a graphic with a picture marker symbol, defining a pop-up template. So that's when, when you click on it, we want to display the, the image next to it. And then he there, here's where we set up that uh, nice animation when you click on that button for the main page. So um, very simple app, but it shows how, I mean, jQuery and, and the API are working side by side, but uh, not necessarily stepping on each other's toes. So that's one, it's, uh, I, I'd say the, the main concern here is just being able to 
make um, the dependencies load uh, in the appropriate order, and then just um, do your, your mapping using the JavaScript API, um, isolated from whatever um, uh, jQuery specific logic you have on your application. So that's one of our apps um, in, a, in a nutshell. The, um, the, other, one, the other one we have here is, takes uh, the opposite approach where uh, in 4.0 all of our widgets have a view model and a view which allows uh, users to kind of author views if they wanted to with whatever framework they want. So what I did is I took a um, flipping the application, the, the structure of the previous application, I brought in uh, jQuery, jQuery UI and Bootstrap into um, the jo a JavaScript application in order to create custom views for uh, the zoom and the, the boot base map toggle widgets. So let's uh, go into how we did this. So same as the previous one, I set up my dependencies. So jQuery is uh, available as soon as my application starts. Right after, uh, I, I am just uh, setting up my map, my view, instantiating my widgets and adding them to the view. And you can see here the, the way these widgets are, are being created, it's not following our standard way of uh, creating widgets because these are coming from jQuery UI. So what I did is I created um, wrapper widgets with jQuery UI and I'm just consuming them as uh, I would normally do um, in this application. And then the, um, the view UI which is uh, this API in the, in the, that you can leverage to place or add elements to your UI and not have to, not have to worry about uh, layout at all. So it just, uh, it's just expecting a, either one of our widgets or a DOM element. So that's what, how we got it to work with, um, with a jQuery object. We're just giving the raw element and the JavaScript API knows what to do with it and it just places it on the different corners. So let's look at uh, what it takes to create a custom view. So I mentioned the uh, view models earlier before and the view model is basically the core essence of a widget. And once you, you have a view model, it's just a matter of uh, worrying about the DOM, how the DOM will behave, how the DOM will look like. And in this case, I'm using a, I'll, I'll use jQuery UI and jQuery for it. So if you're not familiar with jQuery UI widgets, the way they work is once you have uh, the jQuery and jQuery UI loaded, you register your widget to the jQuery object, which I'm doing right here. And I'm uh, giving it a sp uh, specific namespace for this demo. And afterwards, I'm just implementing the, the um, lifecycle methods that the, the jQuery UI widgets expect. Um, so I'm, I'm providing a set of uh, default options. I'm creating a default base map view toggle, sorry, base map toggle view model uh, when, 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 whenever a widget is created. And then I have some additional setup to kind of propagate events as well as update the UI whenever uh, my view model um, whenever the state active base map or next base map properties change. Whenever these change, I will call the update UI method, which uh, will update uh, the UI. So let's take a look at how um, the UI is created. So if you can see here, it's just using the regular way, regular jQuery UI of uh, building the UI. I'm using the jQuery object to create the wrapper elements, add the classes, create all the different pieces, um, and then set up the event handlers. So I want the base map toggle to re react whenever it's clicked or whenever you um, focus on it and hit the enter or space button. I'm setting it up here, adding additional classes, and whenever that's done, I keep a reference to all of these uh, different elements, which um, will get used in the update UI method. And whenever this method gets called, it just references those parts and just updates uh, the appropriate attributes or properties based on what the view model uh, properties are. 
And um, I also provide some APIs to delegate to the view model. So the way our widgets work, the views delegate, um, you can access properties and methods on the view, but they're really delegating to the view model. So that's uh, this, what this method does to kind of have the same a APIs exposed to the widget. So this is a, this is a base map toggle and it's just using jQuery and, uh, sorry, jQuery UI to, uh, uh, to define the widget instance itself and jQuery to define its structure. If I look at the Zoom widget, it's pretty similar, but now what I'm doing is, um, oh, and I forgot to mention, the base map toggle is reusing classes that we already have available in the JavaScript API. So it's the same, same classes that the, the out-of-the-box widget is using, so that's why it has the same look. So when I, when I, go, when I go here to the Zoom widget, one of the difference here, uh, differences here is that I'm specifying custom classes uh, and these classes are specific to, to Bootstrap. So whenever I'm creating my UI, I make sure to create the appropriate elements using this utility function that I'll go into in a, in a while and apply the appropriate um, um, classes. Sorry, this is the, um, this is where I create the, um, the UI structure for it, the HTML structure using jQuery add the, boot, the bootstrap classes, and then that's pretty much it, similar to the base map toggle. And it's the same behavior as the widget. And uh, the only thing I had to do is define the, define the, the, the HTML structure and the classes that are gonna be used by in bootstrap in this case, since I'm already importing it. So that's uh, kind of a, uh, the experiments we did in terms of um, evaluating integration with these two, this li this, uh, these libraries and the JavaScript API. And uh, if, uh, we can move on now to um, uh, questions if you have any. No questions? No? All right. Well, please make sure to take our survey and uh, rate us and give us uh, feedback so we can improve for our future sessions. Uh, thank you very much.